Hi everyone, welcome back to the Coder Shop channel, where we simplify Odoo for you. In today's video, we're diving into how to create customers in Odoo 18, covering the available options, how to manage multiple contact addresses, and how each field can impact your sales and purchase processes. So let's jump into Odoo and get started. Contacts can be found in different modules, like sales, purchase, or contacts itself but the label changes depending on the context. For example, in the sales module, they are called customers. In purchase, they appear as vendors. Even though the name changes, the creation process is exactly the same across all modules. So let's open the sales application, go to the orders tab and click on customers. That'll take you to a list of all the customers already in your system. To create a new customer, click the new button. This opens the customer creation form. At the top, you'll see an option to choose the customer type, either individual or company. If you select company, you're creating a business entity. And all the key settings like accounting, payment terms, and contacts will be linked directly to that company profile. Let's go ahead and create an individual. I'll call him Matthew. And we'll link him to the company Deco Edict. Once you select the company, many fields like address, tax ID, and accounting info will be auto-filled from the parent company. Now we can fill in the rest of the information, specific to Matthew, like his job position, phone number, mobile, email, website, title, and even tax, which help you to group and filter your customers based on your business needs. Now let's move on to the first of these steps below. This is where you can assign multiple contacts or different addresses to this customer. For example, let's add a delivery address if it's different from the main company. After selecting the appropriate type, I label it Matthew's delivery address. Then update the address details and any other necessary information. Once that's done, click Save and Close and the new address card will be added. You can repeat the same steps to add an invoice address, follow-up, or other types. There is no limit. You can add as many contacts and addresses as needed, depending on your customer's structure. Now let's look at the sales and purchase step. Here's where you fine-tune how this customer interacts with your sales and purchase flow. I know it looks like a lot of fields, but don't worry, most of them aren't mandatory. These are just additional details you can fill in about your customer. The only required field here is the customer name. Everything else can be added later if needed. Under the sales section, you can assign a default sales person who will handle all sales for this customer. Next, we have payment terms. This controls how long the customer has to pay after receiving an invoice. You can also set a preferred payment method for incoming payments and choose a fiscal position to manage tax rules based on the customer's location or tax profile. Since Matthew is linked to a parent company, Deco Addict, some details like the price list and accounting info are inherited. But if needed, you can always customize things further by going directly into parent company's card and configuring things there like bank accounts, accounting entries, and other options. All right, let's go back to Matthew's profile and take a look at the purchase section. On the purchase side, you can assign a buyer, similar to the salesperson, but for purchasing. You also have separate purchase payment terms and preferred payment methods. This help automate how you handle procurement with this customer if they are also a vendor. Now here's the 1099 box field. This is mainly for US-based companies. It tells all the which section of the 1099 tax form to use when reporting payments made to this vendor. Lastly, you'll find the receipt reminder setting. This lets you automatically send a reminder email to your vendor a few days before a product is expected, so they can confirm the delivery timeline. It's a nice feature to keep things running smoothly. The last step is internal notes. This is where you can store private comments or important details for your team, information that won't be visible to the customer. 
At the top, you'll also notice smart apps like sales, invoice, tasks, purchases. These tabs give you quick access to activities related to this customer. For example, if you created a sales order for Matthew, the number in the sales tab will increase. It helps you quickly track all the business you've done with this customer. And that's it. That's how you create and manage customers in Odoo 18. As you can see, Odoo offers a flexible and detailed structure, whether you're working with individuals, companies, or customers who are also vendors. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an update from the Codeshop channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.